The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. Hi, this is Mia Mohsen Zia, also known as Mia No Time for Love. Check out my latest book, Missing, available in print and e-book formats on Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios and sponsored by international award-winning author Mia Mohsen Zia of Missing. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on over 40 podcast platforms, as well as HamiltonRadio.net, Diamonds FM, and the TheMikeWagnerShow.com. We can be heard in over 100 countries, featuring over 1,000 well-known and amazing guests throughout the globe, and named one of the top 100 global podcasts in the New York Weekly Times, Hollywood Entertainment News, Los Angeles Weekly Times, Apple, and Chartable. So sit back and relax and enjoy another great episode of the award-winning Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios and brought to you by official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We're here with a terrific gentleman who's a co-founder of a community bringing over three decades of dedication to men's well-being and expert leader in vulnerability and um, connection and began his journey from a... Um, personal healing to um, the creation of a wonderful group, which is a men's emotional leadership development. And we'll find out what that is. Um, and basically fueled by the belief in uh, transformational power of authentic communication and community of men. And of course, uh, this program introduces a better revolution with a, um, a special solution, basically, with um, scalable solutions, shifting from the traditional analysis over to uh, masculinity to basically a grassroots model where men are trained to um, support and empower each other. Right now, this is a crisis that needs to be addressed. And this wonderful gentleman we'll talk about, he's also got a book called Grow Up, A Man's Guide to Emotional Masculine Intelligence. Live, ladies and gentlemen, plus studio somewhere in beautiful Northern California, the co-founder of MELD, which is Men's Emotional Leadership Development. He's also got a book called Grow Up, A Man's Guide to Emotional Masculine Intelligence. So, man up, guys. We got the multi-talented Owen Marcus. Owen, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Mike. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's great to have you on board, Owen. So you're a co-founder of MELD, which is um, Men's Emotional Leadership um, Development, bringing over three decades of dedication to men's well-being and also the expert leader in vulnerability and uh, connection. You began a journey from a personal healing to uh, creation of MELD and fueled by a belief in transformational power of authentic communication and community and, and it introduces a bottom-up revolution with scalable solutions from the traditional over to a grassroots model, and we'll find out what it is. Plus, you got a book you also wrote as well, and talk about that. And before getting all that, Owen, tell us how you first got started. Uh, I got started in this because I needed it. Um, mm -hmm. A little story, I um, was in a relationship with a woman 30 years ago, and I was I talked about this at my uh, TEDx talk oh, quite a few years ago, but... Uh, she was sitting on the couch and she said she couldn't feel me. And I, I wasn't arguing with her, but I was trying to convince her as if it was a debate that I was being emotional. And then finally it hit me that uh, I wasn't being emotional. I was being intellectual. Uh, I didn't change me, but it made me aware that maybe I needed some help. Started uh, a men's group in my clinic. I had an integrated medical clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona at the time. And one thing led to another 19 years ago. I was up in Sandpoint, Idaho, up near the Canadian border in a small town, and I decided that I wanted another men's group, but I wanted it different than the other ones, different than the traditional men's group. And so a lot of my previous training, my graduate and postgraduate training, had been in uh, what they call uh, psychosomatics or, you know, using the body uh, to help facilitate emotional healing. I studied with some of the original uh, founders of those different therapies. And so I took all that and created a new model that uh, really took off. I just invited 11 guys, they all said yes, and I thought we'd stop there. Well, 19 years later, this group, the Sandpoint Men's Group, has had over 400 men in it. We have over 50 men in it, five groups. I'm in one of the groups still, even though I live here. It's a, a Zoom group for the expats. Mm -hmm. And all that evolved into creating a, a, a company called Every Man. I, founded with all a couple of guys and I brought all this teaching and developed more teaching 
And then um, that wasn't working out. And the beginning of the year, I took my crew, my core group, uh, to Mel to form a new company. And so essentially what we do is we use the physiology of stress. Uh, there's a lot of research that backs that up. And we develop ways for men to use their somatic awareness, or awareness of the body, to become more connected to their own experience, their somatic and emotional experience, and thereby connect to others. Because a lot of the work I do is also with couples. My partner's a couples therapist. Hmm. That is rather interesting. And uh, what was that one precise moment that simply influenced you into um, what you're doing? Was it light bulb moments that simply said, this is it? Um, good question. It was a few light bulbs. It was that conversation with a girlfriend that time. It was doing my men's group in my clinic, which was not good, but I, I thought there was a potential there. But another light bulb moment was 19 years ago when I asked these guys and I knew I had to perform, you know, you know, how guys are, you know, we have to perform. <laughs> and so when I had 11 guys show up in my living room in my straw bell house, you know, and then in a week I knew, oh, I got to come up with something that's going to work. And I didn't know it was going to, but it really did. And I haven't for 19 years, I haven't stopped developing this model, which is really unique for men and uh, unique for men's work. And with that, we've gotten endorsements from all the top uh, therapists in the country. Wow, that is something. And of course, I remember, you know, men's group was being, um, you know, really empowered. I think it was the late 80s, early 90s, promise keepers and all that. And that was like, you know, the beginning right there. It kind of tailed off. It seemed like it was up and down, up and down, because men's groups have been around for quite some time. They have. And, and before that, they were like in the 60s, with the women's lived, there was a whole movement. That was a, for, sort of the first iteration of men's groups. Robert Bly, the poet, was a, a big catalyst of that. And that was working primarily with the, the Jungian archetypes and mythology. And really, that was just telling guys, it's okay to be a man, and it's okay to have emotions. But it didn't go much further. And then there's, there were a few other iterations. But what we're doing is taking off because it's not prescriptive. So we're not telling guys, this is how you should be. We're saying, look, we're going to give you the tools that you should have had. We all should have had, but you didn't have, and you can do what you want with these tools. But what happens when these guys have these tools, you know, they're what some people call their emotional intelligence improves. I don't really like that word because it infers mm. that we're not intelligent. And mm. I don't think that's the issue. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds to me intelligent, emotional intelligence kind of, just basically just relates to women that sounds like so yeah you know and it's yeah you know, it's really developing emotional fluency but the real problem well two real problems why men are in the situation that we're in we have a history uh, and now you know research is showing there's such a thing as inherited trauma so we have a history of stress and trauma that impacts us let alone our own stress and trauma uh which can really shut us down and limit us uh, in many different ways. And then we have the uh, cultural phenomena. And what I saw with that is that, yeah, we all came from tribes. 10,000 years ago, we were all in tribes. And it was a different deal then. But, you know, we left a tribe for the farm and 200 years or more ago, we left a farm for the factory. And that's when things really changed because men were gone. So women had to step up. So women stepped up and they raised the boys and took care of the family. And the teachers were were women, the nurses, now the therapists. So it, it's not a conspiracy. It's just that they were the emotional responsible party. So the more feminine perspective of how to be emotional is sort of melded into, you know, what it is to be emotional as a man, where, you know, we go back, you know, thousands of years and there was really no distinction like that you know men had their own way of being women had their own way of being and it worked together because it was actually a balance mm -hmm. and certainly does this too and of course i was thinking about intelligence i was reading about an article where this guy was leading some groups where women tend to have wires all over the place and men are just like just straightforward thinking so i just so uh, reading about that if that takes part of it or anything like that yeah i think we all know men and women that we process differently um and that's that's great if we understand that and know how to sort of have our own unique or our own intrinsic way of balancing that the problem is is that so often with men and i was certainly one of them that 
I didn't really know what I was feeling, so I couldn't really communicate it. For example, you know, I again, I do these couples workshops, and, and we do a little teaching, but we break the couples off into their you know own little dyad, and we go around and support them. And what's really interesting is the guy will think he's talking emotionally to his partner, and he's using emotional words, but she's not feeling it because he's not feeling it. He's analyzing, judging, suggesting, fixing all the things that we do really well. He's really thinking and trying to be emotional, but he's really not. And she's getting frustrated. And so I say to the fellow, Hey, Joe, can I just sort of show you how to do this? He goes, yeah. So I sort of take a deep breath and I channel him in a more masculine emotional way. Almost inevitably within 30 seconds, the woman starts crying. Wow. Because she feels me and, and she knows she knows that that's what he's trying to feel, but he's not communicating it because he's not communicating it. She doesn't really feel it. And then I have him practice it. And, you know, he doesn't do as well as me because this is his first go around, but he's starting to get it. And she starts to down regulate or relax and they start to connect. So it's not just this, but a big part of it is, is men, we wouldn't, we were never taught. We never had models on how to communicate in an emotional way. And when we do, uh, guys pick it up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, back to like, you know, 20, 30, 40, even 50 years ago, there was also a hierarchy too, where it's just everything's like, you know, top to bottom, you do this and do that and everything. Do you think that probably created more of a stress when it comes to trying to connect in women at the time? Or do you think it's somewhere gotten away, it's gotten easier or in like in social media times, you know, quick selfies, instant gratification and whatever else? Do you think it's gotten a lot more difficult at the time or is it getting a little more easier? and everything like that, especially social media, you know, instant fix. Uh, I think on the whole, it's gotten easier. I mean, it's loosened it up some, but made it crazier. And one of the problems with social media, we are wired for connection. And that comes out of all the research around what they call attachment theory. And so when we don't get connection, we, we real connection, we go for pseudo junk connections. Like when we can't get real food, we go for junk food. Right. And it sort of feeds us, but it doesn't nourish us. And that's often what social media does. And so men and women want to connect, but we just don't know how to do that. And one of the things that has to happen or makes it a lot easier is that both of us need to feel safe. And there's a whole set of studies and physiology about what does it take for men and women to feel safe? Mm -hmm. And certainly did as well, too. And of course, you know, being safe and everything else, of course, there's a crisis going on with safety mental wellness, health, and everything like that. And how can it be addressed with them? Owen Marcus of, of Metal, we'll find out in just one minute. But first, you listen to the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout-out to our official sponsor, the Mike Widener Show, international warring author, Mia Molson -Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson -Zia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those who love be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews. An evil of an endorsed by Howard's celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and Menace. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Weiner Show at themikewidenershow.com and our 40 podcast platforms. Heard in 100 countries, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, Odyssey. Subscribe to us on BitChute, Rumble, YouTube as well. And follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and more. Make sure you take us with you on any mobile device. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Weiner Show podcast, T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies, Makes great gifts 24-7. Go to Amazon.com for your loved ones. Check out the Mike Weiner Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia for great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles. Also t-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, phone cases, and more. Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia. Check it out today. 
and support the Mike Weiner Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, and the Mike Weiner Show.com. We have the co-founder of Mel. Uh, Owen Marcus here on the Mike Weiner Show and also has a book you'll be getting to later, Grow Up, A Man's Guide to Emotional Masculine Intelligence. And, um, you know, before we continue on with Mel program, and, um, of course, there's a lot of uh, crises that's going on in the world, and this one has not been talked about. It's a silent one of men's mental wellness, mental health, and why it is so important, healing, growth, everything like that. And it's been been lately neglected. It has. And what's happened in the last few years, the, the media and even government, uh, we have a Surgeon General that did a big study on loneliness and, you know, was really championing that, you know, we're dying, literally dying because of loneliness and particularly men. Uh, and middle-aged men and and often men in rural areas they're the worst and they did a study in montana just what you know not too far from where i was living in idaho on um, on how men you know in rural areas really did not have connection uh, so but in a bigger sense what's happened now is it's okay to say that men are having problems it hasn't been okay and then there's a fellow that we had on our program several months ago. He's a Brookings uh, scholar. He's an English dude. His name is uh, Rich Reeves, and he wrote a book called A Boys and Men. And so you will say he's sort of a scientist. He, he didn't do the research, but he scoured all the research and he you know, put it all together. And his thesis is that we're leaving boys and men behind. And mm -hmm. we are. We are. Uh, the culture is, the institutions are, government, education. Uh, you know, I think by now most people know that more women are graduating from school, particularly professional schools and men, and guys are just giving up. And so he's looking at, you know, what's causing that? And he analyzes, you know, what's causing it, and he has some solutions. But one of the interesting things he says, which I would agree with, is that there are traditional view is getting it wrong. So the liberals think that any time that you go help a man, you're taking it away from the woman. Really? Oh my gosh. And I've seen that. And then the conservatives think oh, the solution is we got to take it back to the 50s where, you know, the guy's in charge and, and the woman just goes along. And I don't think that works. And I don't think the women are going to go for it. I don't think most <laughs> men want that. In today's society, it's like, can anybody agree on this? That's the thing. Can anybody agree? <laughs> and as well, you know, what we're finding is they're agreeing with our approach because we're neither one of those extremes. And it's a bottom up approach where we're helping men in a, in a, in a non prescriptive way. And we're certainly supportive of women. And that's where more and more therapists and women are sending men to us because they, they care about the men. They know that they need help, they want to help them, and they realize that they might be able to sort of diagnose the problem and realize the guy needs help, but they're also realizing that they're not the best avenue for helping that man. And so there's more and more of these women and, and therapists, which are usually women, are sending us men because they're starting to see that in one way it's simple. If you give a guy a little training and you give him a safe place to practice some of these things, vis-a-vis -vis, you know with other guys that are just being authentic he will get that uh you know there's been a joke in our men's group for years that you know the best night for romance is the night that the guy comes home from the men's group because <laughs> he's really relaxed he's open but he's also assertive he has what i call the assertive vulnerability he's he's a man he's like these women will tell us or tell me he's the guy that i fell in love with hmm that's really interesting. And we thought it was uh, from Bully Night back in the day, the most romantic. Hey, hey, I scored a strike in the spare. Now we're going to have a strike on you. So spare me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I remember back in those days. And, of course, you talked about uh, men in rural areas. I remember the days, you know, they live on the farm rural area. You always got together at a coffee shop. But that has been difficult as well, too. And do you think social media has also created a division in that? And do you think social media can also uh, create it like, you know, by Zoom or say by Facebook groups or anything like that, you know, rural areas. Do you think uh, coffee shops could make a comeback? Is it going to be difficult, easier, or is social media making it uh, more easier or difficult, especially in rural areas? That's a concern. Um, 
I think you could take it if you take it apart. This yes and no. Um, I think in general, uh, social media is making it more difficult in some ways, but it's allowing for connection where you couldn't have it, like across the world and all that, which I'm all for. But the more intimate connection, the more authentic connection, it, it's sort of taken that away. Now that said, you know we've been doing programs for a while, but once COVID hit, we all went virtual. Because you know, we couldn't meet. And I was really surprised at how effective virtual groups are, virtual trainings are. And they're probably like 80% as effective as live. Uh, I mean, I certainly, I think most people prefer the live, but for convenience, cost, scalability, you know, virtual can really work well when you do it the way that we do it, where we slow the guy down, we slow the situation down. It's a safe place, you know, confidentiality. So we have all the components that we have when we're doing a live one. It's just virtual. Um, and it does help, uh, particularly in a small group setting. Guys get a lot. And you know, like I said, I've been in this virtual group for several years and, um, and men have changed tremendously just from being in the group. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, you know, the uh, life's challenges and um, all the stress going on, it has seemed to really gone up. And it seems like being a man is much more challenging than ever. And you've got the tools and the um, analysis and everything to do so and to empower that. Maybe, um, you know, get a little bit more about that. And of course, you all know, men out there, you might want to listen up on how you can conquer as well, especially if it's on Zoom or Instagram or anything like that. Right. Yeah, we do. We do programs with Zoom. We got, we've done free ones. We have a simple uh, four-week course. It's a great introduction. We get all the full spectrum of guys. It's just two hours every Wednesday, uh, which, yeah, we've honed it. They did a big study, and, and they published it like oh, less than two months ago in the APA Journal, which is American Psychological Association, which is the premier journal. They published this big study they did on our course that you know I developed years ago. So yeah, we've proven that it works. Um, and so I think here's a simple thing that I developed for guys, which is what I call the ROC formula, R-O-C. So the R is about relax. Everyone's been telling us to relax, but they don't tell us how to do it. Yeah. And, and simply how we do it is we slow down. And how we slow down is we slow down our physiology. And when a simple way to slow down, <clears throat> excuse me, our physiology, is just to breathe in a more relaxed way. And we, you know, we work with men, giving them some simple somatic or, or body ways to slow down. So when our physiology slows down, the stress response, the survival response, the threat response down regulates or slows down. And so it's easy to, or naturally we relax. And as we relax, we start to, or be more apt to feel our emotions. And that sets us, sets us up for the O, which is to open up. And we open up and we become vulnerable. And we become vulnerable to our own experience. Like, oh, I'm feeling tightness in my shoulders. Oh, I'm feeling sad. But we also become vulnerable to the person or people that we're connecting to. So they start to feel safe. And then this whole uh, science of co-regulation and mirror neurons start to take on where the other person unconsciously picks up that we're relaxed, so they get relaxed. And we have this positive cycle. And then we go from the openness or the vulnerability to connection. We, you know, and that C is connection. We reach out or risk connection. And when a man can do that in a vulnerable way or being present with his emotions and his body, really what's happening for him, inevitably he has a deeper connection. And be it a romantic relationship or business. I work with a lot of executives. We did a, we did several programs for Google and Google X, and Google X is their the R and D division that where all these scientists are inventing the next things for Google, and they had us work with their scientists because these are brilliant. Most of them were men, we, but we just worked with the men working with these men on and how to use their emotional intelligence to be better scientists wow interesting so it's not just about uh, the person itself or be more romantic but it's about to be a better business person a better scientist and a better self and um you know what else could be better maybe like a better athlete or better writer or you know better doctor whatever yeah it's there's a lot of research that talks about, you know, how more efficient we are, no matter what it is, when we're down regulated, when we're relaxed. 
our nervous system sh shifts from the sympathetic state, which is the stress state, to the parasympathetic, which is the, what they usually call the rest and digest. So it's like our bodies can rest, our, you know, our gut can digest. And so when we're there, we're, we're more creative. That's where all healing happens. That's really where all authentic connection happens. And we really, you know, because I used to have this integrated medical clinic, and the biggest thing that I saw, because I used to get a, a lot of referrals from regular docs, and the people that weren't getting well were inevitably the most stressed out. And so we get them unstressed you know, in an acute way, but also in a chronic way. Most of the time, that's all it took. Their body would heal itself. You know, quick little story. I had a guy that was sent to me by a doc. Uh, he'd fly in like every two weeks from Orange County. Uh, he bragged about how he was, you know, he was the go-to guy in the world to develop rob, excuse me, rubber plants. He said, mm -hmm. I ate, drank, smoked my way around the world, never been sick in a day in my life. And then he gets sick and no one can figure it out. And this doc thought that, you know, maybe it was stress. So he said, go see Owen. I think he could help you. So I said to him, look, you're really healthy. You're just worn down and it's wearing down your immune system and everything else. You, you don't know it because it's happened so gradually. But here's the warning. When you start to relax, you're going to be really tired. And so like after four sessions with me, he comes in for the fifth session and he just looks different. And I said, what, what's happening? He said, this is literally what he said. You will be the only one that could believe this. I was so tired that I couldn't lift my finger to change the channel on the remote. Oh my goodness. Wow. Woo. But a few more weeks later, he was well. But he, <laughs> he'd push his body so hard that it finally started to collapse. Now, fortunately, he, wasn't, he didn't get cancer or heart disease. He was just exhausted. But once his chronic stress downregulated or relaxed, and when he left that stress state for the relaxed state, all the energy that was going into stress, it, and I tell guys, it's just like having, like I used to have an old plow truck, you know, and, and you're driving in town and you push the clutch in, but you're revving the engine, you're not going anyplace. And if you keep doing that, you're going to burn out the engine. And that's sort of where he was going. He was, you know, he had like the brake on this time, and, but he wasn't going anyplace. But once we downregulated or he turned down his RPMs, all that energy that was just going to no place other than getting tenser went into healing his body. Now that's, you know, a, a sim somewhat simplistic and classic example, and it's not always that way for everyone, but that just illustrates how, for particularly for men, a lot of our problems, and we don't realize it because it's happened so gradually and all the guys around us are the same, that we're stressed out. And, and if we're really gonna get well, often in a physical way, but also in an emotional way, we have to deal with that stress. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought about it too, when you mentioned about, um, you know, lowering the body, relaxing and everything. And of course, you know, and of course, you know, people juggling demands and everything. It's just like, you know, men are screaming about, uh, I need space. I need some time and everything like that. And for those men who are having a very difficult time trying to find space, time, or, you, you know, trying to figure out, you know, Hey, I need some time. It's like, you know, what's probably the best approach and say, Hey, I need to do this. It's like, you know, trying to find space and everything else. It's like, it's difficult. It's real difficult. And that is one of the problems today. You know, even though we have all these luxuries and, and appliances and these amazing phones, we are under more stress because there's more demands for us There's more distractions. You know, I'm an older guy. And you know, when, you know, I grew up, you know, women didn't work. I, and I'm, I'm saying it from the perspective of that most of them didn't need to work. But now in most families, the women needs to work, which it's great that they can. But, you know, it's unfortunate that a family needs to have two incomes. So and I think people are starting to realize that, which is, you know, the politicians are making all these promises, but they're not really delivering. And, and over the years, we just get more stressed out. And yeah, some of it is mutable to change we can work with some of that mm -hmm. and of course your uh program do does offer a lot of change going from the traditional to the um grassroots and everything and uh you know how does this uh differ from all the other programs and um you know making a big change in it yeah it, we're going to be working with a hospital system on i'm working with men in recovery because a lot you know there's a lot of guys that 
or into some kind of addiction as a coping mechanism, as a survival strategy that, you know, they want to leave and maybe they're not the addict, but they really haven't fully recovered. I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're not doing the behavior, but they're not, they haven't been able to address what drove the behavior. And so uh, we're, we were approached about, you know, creating a program that would address that because we've had, a, you know, ad hoc, some good results with guys that really wanted to get on the other side of their addiction and truly recover. And it's possible. And there's a fellow named uh, uh, Johan Harari. He's an English dude, brilliant guy. He wrote several books. One of them is called Connection. It's come out, I don't know, maybe in the last six years, where he really unpacked that whole thing because he was addicted to drugs, uh, you know, the pharmaceutical drugs, you know, the antidepressants and all that, and told her that's what he was, that's what he needed. And what he realized, that was quite the opposite. And through his own experience and working with or talking to people and really going in and talking to all the experts and reading the research, he realized, and I would agree, that probably in most cases, ultimately, the biggest cause of addiction is the lack of connection. Oh, and what yeah. he saw was when these guys got connected, uh, the need for the addictive behavior, in many cases, it's dissolved away. And that's been our experience. When men really get connected yeah, to themselves and to people that care about them, and they can receive that care, and they can participate in that interaction, um, their lives start to change. Mm, that certainly does as well. What about those with uh, PTSD and also for those uh, that are incarcerated in prison? Um, well, we're going to go back into a prison. We were going to go into a prison and COVID happened. And uh, I was approached oh, two weeks ago about going into a, a maximum security prison here in California. But, but my real experience is with PTSD. I mean, that's where my first training was with, with the guy that literally wrote the book on it, Peter Levine. And so over the years, I've worked with a lot of people, a lot of vets with PTSD. And essentially what happens is we have trauma, but the trauma never leaves us. And it literally gets stored in our body. And so when that trauma can cycle itself through or complete itself in a physiological way, uh, the trauma leaves the body and then leaves the psyche. And then guys can you know, downregulate and connect. Uh, a quick story around that. Many years ago, I had a uh, a fellow that was in uh, special forces and was leading his platoon behind enemy lines. And, and mm -hmm. this is in Vietnam and he was going to ambush a village and they got ambushed. Oh, and so they, you know, they and him himself too had to immediately take action, you know, without even thinking. And he had to break the neck of a 12 year old boy. Oh my goodness. Oh, See, all that came out when when I was working with him and, you know, and, and he held it in his leg and he and for like half an hour, he just shook and cried. He just he got to release that trauma after a couple of decades. And then the next week I saw him, his chronic hip pain for those all those years was completely gone. Wow. Completely gone, because that's what our bodies do. I mean, that's a a very Ill, Ill, illustrative example of it. And sometimes it's not that obvious, but our bodies hold the trauma and particularly the fascia, which is a connective tissue that holds everything together. So we sort of know that when we get tense and we've been tense a long time, we get knots in our body. Mm -hmm. Well, you have trauma, the same thing happens. And so when the trauma releases, the body starts to release or the converse can be true. The body really releases, the trauma releases. And usually it's a more gradual process. Sometimes when we work with guys in our work, it's more dramatic. Uh, but we, over the years, we've worked with a lot of special forces, a lot of, uh, you know, men have served in Afghanistan and Iraq that, that were traumatized. I don't think you could be there and not be traumatized, uh, but some of them severely. And, and they've done everything that the VA or the Navy or the Army could provide, and it wasn't enough. And often they would tell me the best that they could do is give them a big jar of pills. <laughs> I've heard that story a lot where it's like, you know, here's some pills, come back next time, whatever it is. And everything. And they don't want to do that. And now um, a lot of these men are using psychedelics and a lot of that's really working because what this, the psychedelic healing and some people call it the, you know, the medicine journeys can do is they can help catalyze or help release 
that trauma and the body and the unconscious. The, the body, the emotions, and the unconscious are sort of three aspects of a same phenomena. phenomena. And then we have our mental mind, which we'd like to think that that's in control and that we, we can use our mental mind to fix all this. But the rest of the, us is not a math problem, and we need to address these three other variables or aspects of ourselves in a way that is more holistic. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, you know, with uh, men connecting on what we talked about, it can be done on a global narrative as well, too. It was done with a, a few times, but, you know, global narrative, it seems to be much bigger than that. Yeah. Um, when we started doing our stuff after COVID, we would do these calls with these thought leaders and then we do a breakout group. And you get literally get people from all over, guys from all over the world, it was just men. And we put them in a breakout group on Zoom for like 10, 15 minutes with like three or four guys. And they'd come back and go, I just talked to these guys, told them things I've never told anyone or I haven't said in decades. Can I get that guy's phone number? <laughs> and these guys are literally all over the world. But that's how hungry we are, particularly with COVID, for connection. And when you can find a guy that's being real, you'll be real. And then you're real, he'll be more real. And that's what we see in our trainings. Real quickly, guys, once they realize it's safe, they go, I'm all in. And here's a little thing. <laughs> We're competitive as guys. Oh, yeah. And so what happens is one guy has the courage to reveal something, to just be more authentic or vulnerable, and he doesn't get shamed. He actually gets honored all the time. I never wow. see someone get shamed. Every time he gets honored. And then, and then these other guys go, well, hell, I can outdo you. I can be more vulnerable. I can reveal more. Uh, and, and that almost inevitably happens. And then, you know, by the end, these guys go, I want to go again. <laughs> <laughs> They're like because, this. Yeah, because it's like I see that, you know, being real is really, in this context, a huge asset. And I get honored for it. I, I get, you know, points for being authentic. Mm -hmm. And certainly authentic indeed. And of course, we tell everybody to grow up, which is a man's guide to emotional masculine intelligence. And it is a book, by the way, from Owen Marcus. We'll talk more about that. You listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the MikeWagnerShow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios, and brought to you by our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, International Warring Author, Mia Moses Day Missing. We'll be back with the uh, founder of Mel, Owen Marcus. After this time, the Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1 800 303 3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I wanna give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers, and boy, are you in luck. Right place, right time. Tuned in to The Mike Wagner Show. You heard me. We're back with the amazing, multi-talented Owen Marcus on The Mike Wagner Show, the co-founder of MELD, which is the Men's Emotional uh, Leadership Development Program. And also, you're, you're an author as well, too, of Grow Up, A Man's Guide to Emotional Masculine Intelligence. And tell us more about that, including the nine phases of development. So what I realized, Mike, is that there are nine phases. I mean, honestly, I you know, I created them, so it's somewhat relative. I'm not saying that, you know, the written in stone but essentially what happens is as we grow up trauma or stress happens or lack of attachment or you know like our parents aren't there for us in the way that we need or uh or society distorts us in some way and so as we grow up we have these places that we really don't get what we need 
and it creates like a hole in our maturation. And what happens is that hole is like or a weak link in our emotional chain, and that link breaks or we fall into those holes. Uh, and so the book sort of lays out, okay, what, what are these phases or parts of our maturation? And we all have a phase or two that, that for circumstances out of our control, we're weaker. We didn't get what we needed, you know, this emotional nourishment or whatever it might have been. And so once you understand that, you know, and this book sort of gives you ways to understand it and see it, but also ways to go in and, and with yourself or with others to sort of fill that hole. And it doesn't have to be all the way filled, but it goes from something that we're covering or protecting or compensating for to, in some cases, actually something that becomes an asset. Because when we have to compensate for something or develop coping mechanisms, we're hiding something because we had to and we had to survive. But inevitably, there's some gifts in that. You know, like for me, you know, I grew up with dyslexia and um, dyspaxia, which is sort of dyslexia of the body, but also Asperger's syndrome. Uh, and so I learned ways to compensate, uh, which limited, limited, limited me in some ways, like in relationships, but allowed me to be creative in other ways. And so when we start to fill the gaps, we're actually more available to use our unique strengths. Mm -hmm. And certainly does as well, too. And of course, uh, this all ties together. Where can um, where, where can we find the book and uh, how, do, how do the men get involved with the male program and uh, where can get more information? So they can find the book, you know, like you can find any book on Amazon and under my name, Owen Marcus. And the company is meld, M-E-L-D dot community, not com, but community, C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-I. Uh, and that's the URL. And you'll see everything there. You'll, you'll, you can read about what we do, why we do it, some of the science, the research, but some of the programs we have and some simple approaches to, you know, how to frame, you know, being a man today and how to, how to win at being a man in a way that not only serves you, but really serves the people you care about. Mm -hmm. And certainly indeed as well, too. We're here with uh, Owen Marcus, the co-founder of Mel, the Men's uh, Emotional Leadership Development Program, and also the book, Grow Up, and Man's Got Emotional Ma Mask Intelligence on the Mike Wagner Show. Just a few more things. Oh, and uh, what else can we expect in 2024 and beyond? Um, I think gradually this whole thing about men is going to get more press. Uh, more people are writing books, which is great. Um, these people are writing books. They're, they're smarter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the unfortunate part is they keep analyzing the problem, which is great. But and they come up with more institutional solutions, which is good, too. But what we need, and I see the culture getting ready or hungry for this more bottom up approach. Like, and it's more scalable. How do you work with a guy on a one to one basis or one to group or many bases uh, that to, to change this? And, and we perfected over the years a really tight peer to peer model. So we train guys how to have these men's groups where you don't need a trained facilitator. Every guy becomes a leader of the group. And, and you know, most guys, I'd like to say all, but at least most guys have the facilities within them to do that. And once they do that, they get a lot out of it. They start helping other men and they get a really tight community because most men, when you ask them, do you have the kind of friends that you had when you're in school or maybe the military? And they go, no. I don't have my real friends. And it's an, an exception when a guy says, yeah, I still do. Maybe one out of 10, but most guys, and this is that loneliness thing, really don't have the friends that they would have had when they were much younger. And, and when they get in these groups, you know, they have real friends that you know, would have their back. Mm -hmm. And that's very important as well. I mean, we can all use it. I got to say that. And who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Hmm. That you know, the teachers that taught me um, about the body, one was Ron Kurtz. He was a developer of somatic psychotherapy. Peter Levine, we just had on our show a couple of weeks ago. He's a you know, he's a therapist and sort of a scientist that developed uh, somatic experiencing and all the work with trauma. And now uh, Stephen Porges is a researcher that developed all the, all the research around the polyvagal theory, which is really how our bodies work around stress and what you can do about it. So these, uh, and Sue Johnson, who just died, he, she's the um, 
therapist that developed uh, emotional focus therapy. She died last week, that, and she was an amazing person, endorsed us, uh, and she was the one that really developed a therapy around connection and how to get couples that were disconnected connected. And that's very amazing as well. What's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Um, slow down. Slow down and connect to your own experience uh, because what you think is your experience, particularly for a guy, is probably not your full experience. And a simple way to do that is as you're communicating with someone, feel your body. What's your body doing? And if you can feel yourself get tense, you know, that's fine. That's okay. Then go, what do you do? What, what can you do to relax? Breathe, drop your shoulders, and notice what happens. Notice the feelings that come up when you start to relax. And notice the interaction and how that changes when you start to relax. And that's very important. We encourage men to relax, be men, and everything like that. This is amazing. We're here with uh, Owen Marcus, the uh, co-founder of uh, MELD, Men's Emotional Leadership Development, and also the uh, book, uh, Grow Up, A Man's Guide to Emotional Masculine Intelligence here on the Mike Wagner Show. Owen, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Learned a lot from you. Looking forward to having you again soon. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'd love to have you back. Once again, what's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people purchase? Check out your book or get involved with the Med MELD program or find out more information. So yeah, MELD.com, M-E-L-D dot, not com, excuse me, <laughs> MELD.community, <laughs> M-E-L-D dot community, so fully spelled out. And they'll find us and me and, and the books on Amazon under Owen Marcus. And yeah, thank you, Mike. This has been a pleasure and an honor. And uh, ha great to have you on. Once again, Owen, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Learned a lot. Looking forward to having you again soon. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Love having you back. We wish y'all best. And Owen, you definitely have a great future to have you. And let's man up. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show. Brought to you by international award-winning author Mia Mosinzia of Missing and powered by Sonic Web Studios. Be sure to join us again on over 40 podcast platforms and, of course, on the MikeWagnerShow.com, HamiltonRadio.net, and Diamonds FM. Don't forget to support our program with a generous donation at the MikeWagnerShow.com. Thanks for listening. 